Have you ever had that moment where you're browsing on Pinterest and you come across a pin and your first thought is, oh my goodness, I need that. That is exactly what I said when I first saw this early Regency fashion plate. Something about it just spoke to me. And so the planning began. Initially, I was going to make a replica, but that soon changed into an autumn themed gown. In my last video, I showed you how I made the dress. And today's video is all about the accessories. First up is the sleeveless Spencer robe thing. Yeah, I'm just gonna call it that. I used the same bodice as the dress with some minor adjustments in the front. And then I draped the pointy bits. So this is the design I have so far. I realized that my camera was not recording when I got about halfway through draping this. So yeah, that's unfortunate. Once I had the pattern draped, I quickly cut out the fabric. The lining is a linen and the outer fabric is a beautiful iridescent crimson and sapphire silk taffeta. The construction method for the Spencer is a bit more modern compared to the dress. I sewed the lining and the outer layers separately and then joined them together along the neckline. Setting the bodice aside for the moment, I started working on the points. To finish the raw edges, I double turned the edge under a quarter of an inch and then stitched it in place. If I had had more time, ideally I would have done this step by hand, but it isn't really that noticeable. And in the end, I don't think anyone else is really going to notice, except for you guys, because now I've just told you. Oh, whatever. <laughs> So once I'd finished sewing up all the points, I then gathered the upper edge and pinned them along the bottom of the bodice. And then I quickly stitched it in place. I was having some issues finishing the arms I have my Spencer. And so after some research, I came across these two sleeveless Spencers and discovered that they were finished with an edge binding. And so I opted to finish mine in the same manner with a single fold black cotton bias tape. And because this was closer to my face, thus making it easier for people to see, I decided to finish this with a whip stitch for a clean finish, making sure only to catch the lining. Once that was complete, I pinned the lining over the raw edge of the points and then whipped that in place.
Coming to the end of the construction, I used hooks and bars for the front closure. And while this isn't likely accurate, it works quite nicely. And with the Spencer almost complete, it was time for some simple decorations. Copying the fashion plate, I began making some tassels to adorn the points. For the tassel template, I actually used the cardboard that the bias tape came wrapped around. The thread I used for the tassel is a size 10 cotton crochet thread that is intended for crocheted lace. Starting at the bottom, I wrapped the thread around the template 130 times. I then tied off the upper edge with two knots and slid it off the template. And then added one more knot for good measure. Next I cut the bottom edge of the tassel and then combed it out to get rid of any tangles. It is really hard to see the next couple steps as I'm using a black thread, so I have linked the tutorial I followed in the description if you would like to make some tassels for yourself. Once I had completed all four tassels, I used a button thread to sew them to the points. With the Spencer complete, it was time to start on my crown. In the fashion plate, she is wearing a green laurel crown. I did find a golden laurel crown, but due to shipping delays, it wasn't going to arrive for a while, so I decided to embrace the autumn theme and make myself a crown of leaves. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any footage of me attaching the leaves to my crown as it wasn't in frame, but essentially I just placed a leaf on the metal circlet and then wrapped a thin wire around the stem to keep it in place. Next on my agenda was the shoes. After browsing on Pinterest and Instagram, I came across this lovely pair. And so to make my modern ballet flats look a little more historical, I added some ribbon to mimic the Regency flats. Because I wanted to still use these without ribbons as well, I used some button thread to create thread loops for the ribbon to weave through. I actually really love how this came out, so I may not even end up removing the ribbon because it is so darn cute. And finally, it is time for some jewelry. Now red coral is a very popular choice during the Regency era, so I used some mock coral beads and made myself a hand knotted necklace. While you can buy these necklaces online, I really wanted to try and make it for myself and I was able to do this for less than $15 and in the space of a few hours.
I learned how to hand knot this necklace from a tutorial online, and that was actually for pearls, but if you want to try this for yourself, I will also leave the tutorial for that in the description. Coming to the end of the necklace, I realized I was going to be playing Thread Chicken, which was kind of nerve-wracking because I'd just spent the last two and a half hours knotting this necklace. Thankfully, I won. So the outfit is done, but now it is time to turn this more into something 1790s. So let's get started. So while my hair is cooling, I'm going to start on my makeup. Um, I'm not going to show you that process, I'm just going to show you what it looks like afterwards. So it is time to do my hair now. Um, the lighting is getting really bright in here, so I apologize if you cannot see what I'm doing at all.
I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I am really happy with how this outfit came out. Today has been the first day in about a week and a half that we've had no rain. So it's great for getting photos, but not so great for my train. So if you uh, can see this, this is about, I would say five or six inches deep in mud. It's, it's a great look. So I guess I'm sporting the Elizabeth Bennett right now. <laughs> oh yeah, that's gonna be fun washing that out. There's a reason why the ladies of the 1790s carried their trains over their arms. Because otherwise, you will have a very upset ladies maid, or you are going to be spending many an hour in front of your wash bin cleaning this up. <sighs> there was question on how trains were put up. Now, I have looked through as many things that I could find online. I didn't figure out how to put them up historically, but I have come up kind of with a way that I guess is more modern bridal than historical, and that would be to attach uh, two little hooks to the train. Now they would be very like tiny little hooks, and unless you're looking for them, you're probably not going to see them. And then they get hooked into, can you even see that? into the back of the skirt so it would hold the train up off the ground keeping it out of your feet or out of the way of your feet theoretically that's what i'm going to do i haven't actually done it yet but i've pinned it in place just to see how it looks and i think it looks great so for balls i think that is what i'm going to be doing for this dress is i'm going to be hooking up the train now instead of doing the hooks both the same way i think i'm going to do them opposite ways so it's not easily unhitched for dancing but other than that i didn't really find much information like i'm still looking so if you know of any information on how trains were held or brought up other than pinning or anything else please let me know down in the comments because that's something that i'm still looking for i had questions about it in the last video and it's just one of those things that I can't find any information on, and there has to be information on it somewhere. The only reference, of course, that I've been able to find for like novels is the Jane Austen, uh, Northanger Abbey. It's kind of frustrating on that side, but hopefully someone who knows how they did it will see this video and we can get an answer. Oh, I have to say, November weather is not great for Regency wear, um, especially when it's this thin. Uh, do not recommend. I think my toes were going numb by the end of it, but I guess I was uh, going for that Regency experience. <laughs> what is it? What was it called? The um, muslin fever? Yeah, it makes sense. Those ladies were freezing. I only had one layer. I was freezing too. So thank you. That is everything for today. I hope you enjoyed this video as well as the series because I guess my Regency series is coming to a close. I'd love to know what your favorite video was in this series and if it has inspired you to make a 1790s project for yourself. I actually still have one secret Regency project coming up, but you will find out about that more in the future, and that is going to be for a very good cause. So that might be a little bit of a hint there. Oh my goodness, I love this project. I love how it came out. I love the fit. I think I do still want to add a belt to it, like a black belt with like a shiny buckle on the front, but we'll see. I can always add things in the future. And of course, I still need gloves because what Regency lady does not have gloves? And a ridicule. And maybe a turban hat. There's a really cute turban hat I want to make. Oh. Yep. If you are new to my channel and you feel like sticking around, feel free to hit that subscribe button. I post a new video roughly once a month. So that is everything for today, and I will see you next time. Bye! I feel like a little out of nymph. I love it. <laughs> Swing them tassels. <laughs> yeah, I love the tassels.